Hello and welcome to the Evidence-Based Chiropractor. I am your host, Dr. Jeff Langmaid, and you are listening right now to the 200th episode of the Evidence-Based Chiropractor podcast. For nearly four years, this podcast has been coming out each and every week, delivering research and marketing in the time it takes to get to your office. If you've been listening since the very, very beginning, thank you so much. I listened back and looking at the episodes today versus back then, I think we've improved a tremendous amount. So if you've been along for the ride the whole time, Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new, that's awesome as well. We've been fortunate to be one of the most widely listened to chiropractic podcasts in the world. So we constantly have new listeners coming in as well. And if you're new, thanks for tuning in. This is a good one to start out if you are new because I'm going to be giving away a set of chiropractic office posters from the Evidence-Based Chiropractor as sort of a giveaway special kind of thing for the 200th episode because I don't think we did anything at the 100th episode. So we're going to have some fun today as well as diving in to some research as well. We're going to be talking about a paper titled Comparison of Outcomes in MRI Confirmed Lumbar Disc Herniation Patients with and without modic changes treated with high-velocity, low-amplitude spinal manipulation. But maybe I'll let the cat out of the bag on the giveaway now. So what I'd like to do is give away a set of Evidence-Based Chiropractor office posters. Uh, You can check them out at theevidencebasedchiropractor.com in the shop if you haven't seen them, or if you just want to trust me that they are awesome, then you can win them by doing something exceptionally simple. Hop on to iTunes. If you're listening to this podcast in the app on your iPhone, you can do it right from the app. Leave a rating or a review or feedback for this show. What I'm going to do is next week, I will choose one person who left feedback over this week, and I will give away a set of chiropractic office posters. So if you've been listening, or if this is your first episode, hopefully you think this one's a good one, you know, please head on over to iTunes, leave a rating, a review. Obviously, if you just re- leave the rating with the stars, I'm not really going to know who you are. So leave a couple lines of text, leave some feedback, a review of this podcast. I will look at the date that it is posted, and I will choose one person from this next week, and I will give away a set of office posters. I'll announce the winner live next episode. So... Evidence-based chiropractor posters. If you want to win a set of three, simply head over to iTunes. Make sure that you leave some feedback, uh, and then I will pick one, and we will give away a set of office posters. I don't think we did anything for the 100th episode again, but this is the 200th episode. I think we more than deserve to have some giveaways coming up, and it probably won't be the last time. We won't wait another 200 episodes to do some giveaways. I think we're going to have some more fun, some more interaction on this podcast as we move forward. But we are going to stick with the research and the marketing. So let's take a look. The purpose of this study was to determine if there was a difference in outcomes between modic positive and negative lumbar disc herniation patients treated with spinal manipulation. So we've talked about modic changes, I think, not too terribly long ago on the podcast. Modic changes are the end plate changes you see to the vertebra, right? Right where that end plate meets the disc, where the disc connects to the end plate of the vertebral body. Modic changes can occur, and they typically happen in modic 1, modic 2, or modic 3 type changes. Modic 3 are what I'll call stable changes. They just look like sclerosis when you look at it. They are fully formed. Many people don't even get to that point. That takes decades and decades. But modic 1 and modic 2 have the propensity to cause pain and specifically become inflammatory. That's where things start to get interesting. End plate changes are okay, but they can become inflammatory and painful over time. This study was looking at, well, what happens if those individuals get manipulation, get a chiropractic adjustment during that time, especially those individuals that have concurrent disc herniations. So they note the role of spinal manipulation, the role of chiropractic care, you know, for conservative treatment of symptomatic lumbar disc herniations. It's been controversial over the years. But in 2014, they cite Lehman, who published a study which showed a high degree of clinical, clinically significant improvement in patients with leg and back pain due to a disc herniation who were treated with adjustments, with no adverse events, by the way. So when we look at medications, like we talked about it before on this podcast, opioids, 100 deaths per day, NSAIDs, 3,000 deaths per year. When you look and see no adverse events or very, very low risks associated with what we do within chiropractic, 
our case for these patients starts to become exceptionally compelling, not only on the efficacy side of things, but certainly also on the safety side. The researchers found at two weeks, 76.5% of patients with modic changes and 53% of the modic negative patients reported clinically relevant improvement. That's incredible. At two weeks time, three quarters of the individuals, over 75% of the individual with modic changes had clinically relevant improvement. And over half of the individuals that didn't have modic changes had clinically relevant improvement. Those results are absolutely fantastic, but let's dive even deeper. These researchers found, quote, this is the first study to investigate the role that modic changes may have in relationship to the outcomes from the specific treatment of high-velocity, low-amplitude spinal manipulation in a group of low back pain patients with a very specific diagnosis. Both the disc herniation and modic changes are known to act as pain generators in the lumbar spine. So this is the first time that anybody's evaluated this. That's exciting, right? This came out in JMPT just, I believe, last year or just uh, in 2016, rather. So this is a relatively fresh paper. First time anybody's looking at it. And also, again, we know there are multiple sources of pain. If somebody has disc herniation and modic changes, it's very likely that they have more than one pain generator. Researchers also found, quote, the percentage of patients reporting clinically relevant improvement in this study increased over time in both categories of patients. But surprisingly, at two weeks after treatment, the percentage of modic, ch modic change positive patients reported clinically relevant improvement was over 23% higher than the ones without. So this is this is where it starts to get interesting, right? And they start to ask some questions. A great paper doesn't necessarily give an answer to everything, but it stimulates new questions. This paper does exactly that because they, quite frankly, weren't expecting to see the people with modic changes have the results. It was kind of, you know, the thought process was, well, if there's a disc herniation that's kind of mechanical, you get in there with an adjustment, you might be able to open up the IVF, decompress the disc a little bit, and we'd expect to see some relief there. But when there's end plate changes that are active and inflammatory, huh, how does an adjustment work to take care of that? Now, this paper doesn't exactly find the answer, but it certainly asks the questions to say, maybe there's a central component. Maybe there's a you know nervous system component. Maybe there is a pain, uh, you know, how we feel pain component you know, within the central spinal cord. All of these things are true, obviously, as we've seen in other studies. However, this is the first to categorize it in terms of modic changes. The researchers also found, quote, it does appear that modic one patients are prone to relapses or recurrences of pain, and this may be due to the influence of the inflammatory component. It would be interesting to follow the modic one patients over a longer period of time than just one year to identify these further relapses and determine if the condition stabilizes. So this is an important component, and I don't want this to be lost. I know there's a lot of chiropractors that listen to this, docs that listen to this podcast and associate within the evidence informed, evidence-based community. I mean, the title of the podcast is The Evidence-Based Chiropractor. But I think you know it's important to have levity with these situations. People are going to have relapses throughout time. They're going to have challenges. I know maintenance chiropractic care of three adjustments for the rest of your life probably isn't necessarily the best or most logical thing to recommend on the first visit somebody comes into your practice. You don't know how they're going to respond next week, never mind next year or next decade. However, when we see things on film that are structural challenges, that are, you know, in this case, modic changes that are prone to relapse over time. The, the changing to the bone is not going to reverse course tomorrow. person might feel better within a week or two, but what are you doing to keep them feeling well so they stay active? If they're prone to relapse consistently and they're not having any care, and that care can mean a variety of different things within a chiropractic clinic, right? It might be exercise and rehab. It might be nutrition. It might include adjustments. It could include massage. It might include you know some passive modalities to get people through just mild increases in pain. There's a variety of different things that you can do in your practice besides four visits and get out, right? I mean, being a good provider, being a good practitioner, being a good chiropractor to me is about really understanding what's going on with that individual. If they have modic changes and they are a geriatric patient, they're older, they have challenges getting around, they have a lot of structural challenges on the inside. Well, you might be able to get them feeling better very, very quickly in your practice. However, they're probably going to need some ongoing care, at least some every now and again, PRN, as needed care, to help them stay well and get well. And having that conversation is very, very important because that's what sets the expectations 
for what somebody you know expects literally in your practice as they move forward. And that can be the big difference between somebody saying it didn't work, aka they had an 80% you know, resolution of symptoms in two weeks, which is awesome, but something comes back two weeks later and they're saying, oh, that didn't work. And, oh, doc told me that I'm probably going to have a relapse, that it's very likely that something's going to kick back up over time. I got 80% improvement before. I'll just pop back over there and get back on track. That's a very, very different mentality. And us as chiropractors, I think some of us uh, over time have maybe not done the best job preemptively uh, getting into those conversations because there are a lot of people out there, oh, it doesn't work. Well, it, it probably did work very well for you, but the expectation wasn't set long term. So it's a little bit tangential, but I think it's important when we talk about disc herniations, important when we talk about modic changes end plate changes, these things take a long time. And improvement, thankfully, improvement with what we can do as chiropractors can come very, very quick for a ton of different people. People improve very quickly with what we do. It's awesome. There's the physical nature of the adjustment, how it affects the disc, how it affects the facet. There's the impact it has on the peripheral and central nervous system. All of these things are huge, and they allow us to get unbelievably fantastic results. But the flip side of that is people are going to live their life under gravity, people are going to have injuries, people are going to continue to age. These are all things that add up over time. So having proactive conversations with your patients about what they might expect in the future, very, very, very important. So a couple takeaway messages here from this paper. Lumbar disc herniation patients with modic changes report better outcomes after spinal manipulation treatment at two weeks, three weeks, and six months compared to patients without modic changes. So if there's some inflammatory aspects going on, it looks like what we do as a chiropractor can help improve that. And modic one patients appear to be more prone to reoccurrences compared to modic two patients and those without modic changes. So as modic one changes become modic two, this is my take on it we can see an increased opportunity for relapse. As those modic changes, if the modic changes don't exist, well, that's easy. Or if they're farther along in their progression, they are what I will refer to as a maybe a little bit more stable and less prone to relapse. So important to keep that in mind. If you're looking at x-rays in your practice, take a peek at the end plates. Specifically, if you're looking at MRI, great opportunity to take a peek at those end plates, guide and direct your patients in the best manner possible. That is what it is all about. Hopefully, that's what we've been able to do with this podcast over the last 200 episodes, give you an opportunity to learn a little bit about the research out there, how you can apply it to the patient conversations you're having inside of your practice each and every day. We love to throw in a little bit of marketing. That's also my passion is really how do you get that message out there in the community? That's why we have the evidence-based chiropractor, the smart chiropractor, and Cairo emails. So if you want help on the social component, check out the smart chiropractor and Cairo emails. If you want to bridge the gap and build relationships with other healthcare providers, providers and increase referrals. We had a doc last month within the evidence-based chiropractor that got 18 referrals from medical providers in his community. If you'd like to be something like that uh, and want this, you know, this tools, the strategies, the tactics necessary to get there, then become a member of the evidence-based chiropractor. And or if you just want to grab a set of three chiropractic posters, I would not blame you. And you can do that or at least have a chance to win very easily by leaving some feedback on this show within the next week. And I'm going to look forward to the next 100, 200, and maybe 300 more episodes. We hit 200. That is awesome. I appreciate you for being a chiropractor. I definitely appreciate you for listening to this podcast. And I hope that you win that set of chiropractic office posters. Have a great week in practice, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Evidence-Based Chiropractor. If you want to grow your practice, come back for next week's episode. If you want to grow faster, visit the evidencebasedchiropractor.com and join our MD Marketing membership today.